second half. This is fielded at the goal line. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You got everything going your way. You're probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan's showing you. You'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. You'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. And he has not been able to find the same type of running room this week as last. It, you know, such a great game. We met with him. He came in, had the biggest smile on his face. So we just thought that would carry over. Sometimes you wonder if maybe it borders on a little overconfidence. They were so good last week. He's getting extra blocking on the perimeter from the wide receivers to get him downfield. And he lost the football. And now the Rams have got it. Going the other way. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. That's where they'll take over. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Now the attention turns back to the Rams' offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. They'll set up a throw. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Back to throw here. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. They come up in an offset eye. They'll look to throw here on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Quick pass play there on the slant, Charles. Works out well for the offense. The offense loves it. The defender hates it. Hard to get through the body of the receiver to get to the football trying to cover a slant. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. So the chains are on their sides. It's first and goal from the six. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. 
their big bodied receiver. His 14th touchdown now on the year. And the Rams have broken our tie as they take the lead. That's why you've got your star out there. Throw the ball to him. They did. That's simply saying we don't care what coverage you put out there. He's so good. We're going there with the football anyway, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Inside the red zone, they go to him. He gets it done. Now the try here for the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. The Rams kickoff team on the field, and here we go with the ball in the air. Fielded about a yard deep. And last year, that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year, he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee. And that's at the 25. And the Rams' defense, they make their way back out there now. Coming off a fumble recovery there on the last time they were out on the field. So we'll see what they do here. And once that happens, everybody wants to get involved. All right? Whoever created the last one, they're going to get the praise in the film session. You want that praise yourself so you know everyone's going to be attacking the football. Yeah, we'll see if they can attack it, get hungry, and get another turnover. They'll run it now out of the gun. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again. Then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. Here we go now. Three, two, three. They'll run it now out of the gun. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. I don't care what anyone says. I want a big time back in, in this kind of yardage each and every time I step on the field. A tone setter, these guys are hard to find. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They come out here in the eye. They go play action here on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. And now a first down following that long game. Now a play fake here on first down. Backing up. He's got his man in the crossing route. That goes for a gain of 31. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Three yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. Give it to him right up the gut. And he pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Everyone's looking for the big runs, the explosive runs, the 20 to 30-yard plays. But anytime you're picking up good yardage and setting yourself up on down and distance, offenses love that too. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Now a shotgun snap is, and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And that score and the point after will knock this ball game up. And when you're playing from behind, all you want to do is get back to even and in a sense, start over again. That's exactly what they were able to accomplish. And his kick is right through. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This fielded at the two. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Colts defense, they work their way back onto the field. And yeah, they gave up a touchdown last drive. 
you kind of need to hit the reset button after every touchdown given up, Charles. I love that, and, and the way that you phrased it is perfect because from series to series, you can reset how the game is going to go. If you gave up a touchdown before, it doesn't mean you have to do it again. And if you made a great play before, you have to reset again anyway because they're going to attack. So I love the way you phrased it and put it out there. That's what they have to do in this series. Not like when you're playing a video game. You can't hit the reset button here. Let's go. No, you shouldn't anyway, that's for sure. Second down now after the pass completion. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get up near the 45, they'll spot it at the 44. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. He decided to run a hitch route, it really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Here's a play fake as they set up the throw. And this is incomplete. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Here comes the Rams punter now, as he's on here to punt it away. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. It's really come into vogue to talk about the different gaps that the defense tries to attack in an offensive line. And most of the time, we're talking about blitzes. How many times have you heard double A-gap blitz? But where is the A-gap? It's the space between the center and the guards, either side. So when you're having a double A-gap blitz, that's two guys coming through that gap. In this situation, though, that A-gap wasn't open for the defense to exploit. The offensive line took care of it protected it, and moved the defensive guys out of the way to allow for that nice run. It's a gain of 24 that time, and it'll give the Colts a first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. Single, single, slot, slot. Hey, you're on an island over there. You're on an island. Now let's go. Boom. Ah! They'll look to throw. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. Right. 
We've got a third and 11. They'll set up to throw. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Call it a gain of five. And that's going to make it fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He made his first, this from 47 yards out. And his kick is right there. It's good, and they have regained the lead. So a good kick there, and they wrap up the drive by putting three on the board. And you know, let's face it, you're not always going to come away with six. Defense in the NFL are just too good. But you've got to come away with something. And there, they get three. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. <laughs> Look at the spin. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. And he will find his man on the outside. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. He's got time. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Give him nine there on the first down completion. They come out here in the eye. They're going to look to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. We're off to the fourth quarter here in week 15. Happy holidays to all. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. They'll throw. Looking deep downfield. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Their dangerous wide receiver. His third touchdown of the game. Tenth on the year. And the Rams have taken the lead here in the fourth. And that score gives us our sixth lead change of the game. Are we back on the playground on the seesaw? On the seesaw battle, right? yeah. Up and down, up and down. What a game we've watched here. It's been fun. And that will make this a four-point game. So 
So the drive there took six plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. And the numbers show the improvement, and this is kind of what we thought we would expect to see from him. I know we overanalyze these things sometimes, but what, what switch? What's flipped that switch? Sometimes I think when you're as great as he is, you just kind of roll out each game and expect good things to happen. And that's not always the case. Those guys on the other side of the ball, they're the NFL two for a reason. So maybe at halftime, he gets a chance to regroup, kind of get it back together, get a little extra resolve, and now he's putting it into practice. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. It looked like he might have had a window there, but the rhythm was just a little bit off. It certainly was, because everything that has to come together to get a pass completed, yeah, you're right, the sink just wasn't there. Out of the gun now on third down. He's got time in the pocket. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll be fourth down. The Colts send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Fielded at the 20. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. That confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. And they'll go on the ground. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. No gain on the play there, second down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding him to no gain. Come on, let's go! They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Give it to him right up the gut. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. That'll get them some of what they needed, but they're still left here with a third and nine forthcoming. So second down was a run play. Now let's see what they do on third. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. <laughs> what a spin. Legs still churning. Like a giant pinball. A uh, very good return that time. 18 yards. 
The Rams defense getting ready to go again. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of, great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out, you feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. A really nice gain of 25 yards. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. to throw now on first down. He's going to loft one deep. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A big play there. His third touchdown of the game, number 16 on the season. And the Colts have taken the lead here in the fourth. And that third counter there gives them the lead, and it's obvious they've needed everything that he's given them today. The three touchdowns, that's impressive. But without him, they're not winning this game. He's got it. And this is indeed up to a three-point lead. One play, two plays, touchdown. That's all it took there. A very short and sweet drive that got him in the end zone. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple of extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And the Rams getting set to go now. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before and realize it hasn't worked so something well. Else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better plays. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. They'll drop the throw. Under pressure, and they got to him again. It'll go as a loss of three on the sack, and it brings up third down. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. for the defense in the nickel on third and long. They'll set up a throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Here comes the Rams punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Great coverage there holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and ten. 
And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. I love it. Let's see if they dial it up this drive. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. On first down, he'll drop to throw, surveying the field. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with a lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that, plus three. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Let's face it, when you have a guy who can pick up those types of runs and keep the chains moving or stay ahead of the chains, you're making everyone else on offense happy because you're opening things up right, to allow for a whole Green, lot of different play calls. They'll look to throw now on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well. And every now and then, they don't come down with the football. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two, now third down. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. All right, here we go. Green, 39. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. And this one is right down the middle. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, but the net gain, three points. And you're going to have drives like that in this league. Sometimes you just got to take the three and move on. Always better than nothing. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at the three. Oh, what a move. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. Go. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. Call it a pickup of seven, and they're going to face a third down. And now this is back-to-back -back weeks that he has treated us with a really solid performance. 
We know he's great. We expect it. But this is this is pretty special what we're watching here. We're watching a guy in total command of every situation, throwing the ball well, guiding his team, moving them. This is a whole lot of fun to watch. Yeah, it was fun last week. Sometimes it feels like we're at all these games. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. Back to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. They'll wind up losing three there on the sack. Good pressure, and it's second down. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys that they weren't playing football, They'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. And, of course, the quarterback in this situation, he's realizing time is becoming a factor. Let's see if they can get some points on the board here late. Now back to throw toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. It appears that the pressure is affecting him today. Normally, he knows exactly when to get rid of the football, but today, because he's been hit a few times, he's getting rid of it a little bit too quickly. And leading here late, so a chance for the defense to really close out this game if they can halt the offense. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Here comes the Rams punter now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns time for a break we'll come back see what transpires after this so the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset and let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over They come out with one back and three tight ends. Looking to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And now the Rams are going to halt things as they want a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. They come up in an offset eye. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he gets it. And the Rams are going to go ahead and take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. yard punt just two yards there on the return and possession will switch hands first and ten and a look here at the Colts defense 
And they'll see if they can get one final stop with this crowd behind them. And let's face it, as much as we want to say it's all about the guys on the field, they can get some help right here from the home crowd. And they're going to try their best to get them motivated, get them involved. But they're going to need to make a play or two in order to keep them in that spot. <laughs> the crowd's making some noise now. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Back to throw. And he finds a man on the crossing route. They'll get 23 yards there. And it'll be first down Rams. They'll look to throw. Looking for someone to throw to. Looking left sideline incomplete. will be caught at about the five. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him six on the play, and that'll bring up a second and goal. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. He's back to throw, and that is caught. Touchdown! And they're an extra point away from taking the lead here in the final minute. And now we've got a tie game after that touchdown, and you and I both know what that means. Extra point in this situation, this little time left takes on some extra emphasis, doesn't it? It does indeed. Now inside the final minute, can they get it and hold on? A try here for the extra point. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. A drive there of just four plays. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. The Rams kickoff team on the field. And here we go with the ball in the air. This will be taken in at the one. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations yeah, they this all the time. They've done it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. They're going to hurry back to the line now. He'll look to throw. He's got time. Throwing right, and that's complete. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Back to throw now on first down. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Green, 39! Green, 39! Back to throw again. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. He'll give it to him right up the gun. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. 
So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to almost certainly win the football game. And his kick is good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. And I tell you, when it comes to needing a field goal in closing seconds, pressure situation, there's something to be said for having a veteran kicker trot out there. Agreed. It's so nice to have someone you can rely on, someone who you know has done it before. And this guy's as cool as they come, isn't he? Looks like the defense in press coverage here. One final shot, they'll look to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. He's going to let it fly, and it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty, and with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still... You're wondering, could it happen, possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So for the Colts, the final two weeks are going to tell the story for them as they move to 9-5 and five with a win. And they'll get to stay home again next week as the Seattle Seahawks come to town. Meanwhile, for L.A., they'll drop to 9-5 and five on the year. And they'll be at home next week for a date with the Tennessee Titans. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.